The anti-TB medication are very important for the clinical practice. We have four main medications that we can use as first line and one medication that we can add later as a second line. The four medications are rifamycines, isoniazide, perazinamide, and ethambutol. The second line is tryptomycin. Isoniazide is the most commonly used and it works by inhibiting the bacterial mycolic acid. Now the, the medication itself has to be activated by bacterial enzymes, specifically the catalase peroxidase enzyme. Now this enzyme is actually encoded by a bacterial gene called CATG. So we have a bacteria, it has a DNA. The DNA has a segment called CATG. This CATG is encoded to synthesize an enzyme that we call catalase peroxidase. The enzyme catalase peroxidase activates isoniazide. Resistance to isoniazide is achieved by bacterial underexpression of the activating gene. Remember the CATG gene, once it's underexpressed, we will have less activating enzyme and we will have less active isoniazide. There are three main side effects for isoniazide that you have to know. It causes hepatotoxicity, it causes drug-induced lupus, and this is very important because there are only so many medications that can do this, and it causes deficiency of vitamin B6. Rifamycin works by inhibiting the DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. This is an enzyme involved in the synthesis of RNA. It basically synthesizes RNA from a DNA template. Now, the medication has two main side effects. First, it causes red-orange bodily fluids. This includes the tears and salivary gland secretions. Now, the other side effect is increasing the activity of cytochrome P450 in the liver. This will increase the digestion or breaking down of other medications such as warfarin. Rifamycin is almost never used as monotherapy for TB patients, unlike isoniazide. Because resistance will very quickly develop, the enzyme that the medication works on will change its shape once it's used as monotherapy, thus preventing the medication from binding to it and rendering the bacteria resistant to rifamycin. Now, there are some cases that we can use rifamycin as monotherapy, but there are non-TB cases. So the first and most important is meningococcal meningitis prophylaxis. So if somebody is exposed to a patient with meningococcal, we can give this exposed patient rifamycin and preventing the infection. Another case is being exposed to a patient with H. influenza type B. Ethambutol is very simple. It works by inhibiting the bacterial arabinosyl transferase enzyme, and this will inhibit the bacterial polymerization of carbohydrates, thus starving the bacteria from the inside. Now the medication has only one simple side effect that you have to memorize. This is color blindness, just as simple as that. So remember, ethambutol for ithambutol. Now the medication's resistance can develop from, from altering the bacterial operon EMB gene, and that's pretty much it. From its discovery till now, the mechanism of action of mind is not well understood. We know that it's been activated by the host phagolysosomes, but that's pretty much what we know. Now the medication has two main side effects that we have to know. It causes hepatotoxicity, so it damages the liver and its functions, and it increases uric acids, and this is very, very important for exams. It, if, the, if, if a question about side effects of the TB medications comes in, it will likely be about mind increases your, increasing uric acid. And just like the mechanism of action, the resistance is still not very well understood. We know that it's, the resistance develops by preventing the activation of the enzyme, but the specifics are still vague. 